Hi, my name is Sally Lloyd-Jones and I just wrote a book called Skip to the Loo, My Darling, a potty book. It was first of all, it's when I first read a book all the way through and it was Edward Lear's The Complete Nonsense. And I, nothing was the same after that because I had no idea you could have so much fun inside books. And then I proceeded to write limericks to my poor, you know, endless limericks and rhymes and inflicted them on my teachers and my friends and my poor family. And so I think my first, that's my first memory is trying, sort of imitating Edward Lear. But the funny thing is, it took a lot of years before I realized that at the age of seven, I knew what I wanted to do. It took all these years to come back to just having fun inside books. Well, I would have to say, having Anita Jaram as the illustrator, you can't beat that. But if you're talking about the text, then I think maybe Wibbly Woo. I like Wibbly Woo. But then of course, as children say, they, you ask them, what are your, what's your favourite? And they go, they're all my favourites. So I can't really, I love them all, really. I think we all need the potty, don't we? So I think everyone could possibly need this book. But really, I think it's a little child who might find it a bit intimidating. And my feeling is you have to have fun, don't you? And potty training, I would imagine as a child, I can't quite remember, but that's intimidating. It's a big change and they probably have performance anxiety. So anyone who's finding it really terrifying, if you can get them laughing and skipping with, along with the animals, then I think this is perfect for a child that is just beginning to think about potty training. Sometimes we're very well-meaning, but we can be very heavy-handed with children and they can be so worthy and like who wants to read, you know, it's like you have to have fun if you're going to be learning something and the best way of learning is when you don't realise you're doing it. So I think this book does that with all the fun of the illustrations and the parade. It's a party. I mean, who doesn't want a party? In terms of writing, it's just write the book that only you can write. So that combats, which is true probably of anything in your life, do the thing that you've been given to do and do it the best you can, but don't be looking at what someone else is doing and trying to do what they do because they'll do it better because that's their job. So focus in on what your gift is and go for it rather than try and compete with maybe what isn't even in your gift. I'd go into public schools in New York in some of the most troubled neighborhoods and one time, well, several times, I'd be reading to the very little kids. And of course, because they're in the troubled neighborhood, they're really younger than their actual age, developmentally. And I would read a book, and it was a long book, and it had a song and all kinds of dancing in it. And at the end, my almost without fail, they would give me a group hug. And that, to me, you can't beat that reaction. And whenever I'm doubting what I'm doing, I think about that group hug, and I'm like, OK, that's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for any other reason except that's my real joy. Of course you want nice sales figures and all that and reviews, but if you can get a group hug at the end of a book, what better thing? And at the same school, one time I thought, well they're little, but let's have question and answers. And this little girl put up her hand and she went, I love you. And so, you know, you can't really beat that review, can you? And that, so I remember those, those are the most wonderful reward. You couldn't ask for more, could you? Well, I was thinking about that song, Skip to the Loo, and I didn't really understand it, and who is Loo? Why, why are we skipping to her? Who is she? And it kind of annoyed me, and I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. I think probably, then I started thinking, what if that song was influenced by an earlier rendition, which was all about the actual Loo? L -O -O, and that, that was the original. I started playing with that idea that they just adjusted an old, old song and the really, really original song was Skip to the Loo, L-O-O. -O. So we're only actually getting back to the real, <laughs> the actual song. I've uncovered the historical accurate song. That's what I think. <laughs> I've gone back, like, you know, a literature professor. Well, and also, think about it, Loo, Poo. I mean, you can't ask for a better <laughs> rhyme than that for children. They love that. And any time you can get them laughing, I'm, I'm for that. But I was really fortunate that the rhyme 
ooh rhymes with so many different things. But I love, I love rhythm. And so sometimes what I'll do is, you know, you've got the song. The challenge was not to stick so much to the song that it became boring. So I started, that was a starting point, but then I just would make the rhythm just go with whatever I felt like. And I love the playing with words. So, you know, ballerina elephant, two, two, two. I'd love saying things like that. And piggies to the party, poo, poo, you know, whatever you want to say, piggly poo. It, you can make up these nonsense words to rhyme. And I love that. Well, you know, I mean, if Shakespeare could make up words, we're only just following the master, aren't we?